<laughs> Kennedy I thought uh, you will invite me and then come Let's appreciate Kennedy for making me feel the way I feel And if you are if you are standing next to someone that makes you feel like you know yani ana ku celebrate gi si umpe high five umwambie I love your company I love your company You know you know there are some of you when you when you come you have to look for your whether they are there may the lord bless you you can sit down with a smile as you can see as you can see as you can see as you can see on your bulletin as you can see so let's start praying that is the direction we are going wise people change their mind and they also beautify their face like uh, the way it looks like this is the direction that the lord is taking us pastor mwedi pastor Ann, and a whole host of others uh Margaret Jaga and the whole host of others are on their way to Karatina I hope by now they have arrived they left uh, just around 7 they will be there for ministry let's pray for for them um next sat next sunday we'll also be praying for pastor Mwidi and Ann they will be leaving for Korea that very same day on Sunday So let's come and bless them they'll be away for for quite a while they'll come back at the end of this uh, month let's pray that God is going to to bless them amen today i'm not singing because i have a friend of mine who who will sing on my behalf uh, when i used to play the guitar i would play and he would sing and uh, one of the song that we used to sing was my religious is is not old fashion it is real and genuine but people used to say my religion is old fashioned but it wasn't it was real and it was genuine the man that is going to sing that song that odi um ama ni mwachi hapo kuja kuja wimbe hiyo hiyo wimbo uniokoe nisiimbe Praise the Lord. Amen. Oh, hallelujah to the Lamb. I greet you all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And greetings from my wife. She was not able to be around. And of course, my son here has also gone. They have gone to Nakuru and uh, together with my daughter. And I praise the Lord for giving me this opportunity to be back home. Amen. When I say back home this is my father's home. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's such a privilege and an honor. Amen. And I also appreciate my sister. Amen. She's right there. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. As the Salido chorus I used to teach the Sunday school, we would sing, "My sister, my sister and Oh my sister my sister and I oh, oh, oh what a wonderful sister that God gave without measure we are traveling together oh my sister we appreciate you sister God bless your heart amen praise the lord amen I was taught by an old man who is behind me some quite a number of s- songs and, uh, and he was trying to teach me how to play the guitar but I'm a poor I'm a poor learner because I wanted to to know how to play the guitar much faster than he was teaching me amen and I remember one song he used to teach me was uh, uh, thank god for every flower and every, each tree amen it's an old old song Thank God 
for every flower and a tree. Oh, thank God for all the mountains and the sea. I don't want to continue from that because that is not my song. Amen. And yet he taught me another one. Jesus died for me long ago, long ago. On the teal that's far away. Oh, he was tortured. Praise the Lord. That's not also my song. Amen. Praise God. Well, I had a big battle as I was coming in. From Kampala, I was wondering, which song am I going to sing? Amen. And I thank God, I, I tried one and I thought that was not the song. But the Lord just gave me the grace and uh, I thought I'm going to sing a 1958 old song. Amen. So, those old-fashioned songs, you know what I mean. You understand what I mean, man? Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. I, I have faith in this guy behind me that is going to catch up with this old man. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Amen. When I shall cross over the dark rolling tide, oh, what a glad meeting there'll be. Oh, for close by the beautiful Perry White Gates, my Lord, are waiting for me. Oh, waiting for me. Oh, they're waiting for me. Oh, what God meeting will be Oh, waiting for me Oh, they're waiting for me My loved ones are waiting for me Or I sometimes get weary and long to go home but all my work is not done. I'm glad that I can labor for Jesus, my Lord. To the sound, sweet message, come home. Waiting for me. Oh, they're waiting for me. Oh, what a glad meeting is going to be oh, waiting and for you. Oh, they're waiting for you. Oh, what a glad meeting will be. My Lord has prepared a cabin. For me in the heavenly streets of gold and when my earthly journey is well and down I'll reign with him eternally glory waiting for me Oh, they're waiting for you. Oh, what a glad meeting will be. Hallelujah. Oh, waiting for me. Oh, they're waiting for you. My loved ones are waiting. For me. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. They are waiting for all of us. Yeah. 
Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you know, there are some old people in a program that called Bill Gaither and his homecoming friends. Now this is Jimmy Kimani and his homecoming friends. <laughs> He's waiting for us, isn't he? Bless the name of the Lord. Let me share a short story. Someone who was a missionary in Zaire told the following story. That um, there was a mother in Zaire, which is uh, not very far from us here, who was giving birth. But the child who was giving birth was premature. And as she was doing it, she died. Now they were looking for an incubator so that they can take the prem child and put it in the incubator. But the incubators had broken down two weeks before then. They looked for hot water bottle. And the only hot water bottle that there was could not be repaired. You know how many of you know that hot bottle, hot water bottle, if you are messed, there is no repair. But the missionary told the children that were around there, please children, let's pray for that little child. She was a girl. Let's pray for that girl. Let's pray that God is going to send a hot water bottle today. Because if it, is, it doesn't come today, she will die tomorrow. So those little girls hung around and they were praying. And that girl that was in, uh, born had a sister. But the mother had died. So one girl prayed this kind of prayer. Said, Lord, give us a hot water bottle today. And together with the hot water bottle, give us also a dolly. So that the sister to that girl can also have a doll to play with. And she said, Amen. And the children are good. They went doing their business. That afternoon, a container arrived. And all the children came to see the container. And in the container, there was a hot water bottle. That's not enough. The girl that had prayed went into the container and tore everything up looking for what? For a dolly. Because she said if God can give the hot water bottle, then that same God can give me a dolly. And I'm speaking to people here that if you do, nothing happens now, tomorrow might be too late. And I'm talking to people here who by the grace of God, the hot water bottle has come, but the doll has not come yet. I want to speak to us about prayer because God answers prayer. Did you know that? God answers prayer. God is in the business of answering prayer, but again, it's good for you to know that prayer is hard work. Actually, prayer is battle. Tell your neighbor, prayer is battle. When I was growing up, we used to pray twice. Before food and after food. How many people are in that generation? You know, the generation of prayer was a lot. Before food, so the prayer for food was And the last prayer was Amen. But I know today we pray one prayer and many times we even miss the first one because we are hungry. Have you ever found yourself, you have already have a bite and then you remember, I haven't said thanks. So you don't know whether to throw it out and then say thanks or you say Mungu, you understand. And that's the kind of prayer. Oh God, you understand. You understand this. I want to declare to you that God answers prayer. God answers prayer. Through our prayers, 
We bring the power and blessing of God down upon our lives and the lives of those that are around us. So when we pray, the blessings of the Lord come and the power comes. It comes to our lives and the lives of those to whom we are even praying for. Like even as we prayed for Immaculate, I want to believe that it was not only the power for us, but even for them that we were praying for. Bless the name of King Jesus. It is our great weapon in the battle of souls. And to bring God's kingdom into the realm of the earth, we need to pray. We need to pray. We need to pray. And in this message that I want to share with you, I want to bring about five battle points that the Lord brought to us in the prayer of our Lord, or what we call the Lord's Prayer. Battle points. Because prayer is battle. Prayer is great battle. Matthew 6, verse 7. And when you pray, do not use the interpretations as the heathen do. You know, because sometimes we think God is waiting for our vocabularies. You see, there is an advert, an, an advert that comes in the, in the television. One guy is introducing himself and the other one says, Goja, I am so and so. I have a branch in Kino and a branch in Kikuyu and I have a branch in Mombasa. Fiber. Connect. You know, and sometimes we think God wants to... Have you ever... I, I know some of you Kikuyus that are here, you know sometimes you, 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 you want to pray that deep Kikuyu vocabularies because you think God is waiting for that deep Kikuyu vocabulary. And you know God is wondering, what are you talking about? Can't you just be real? Be yourself. The V and the thou, God is not bothered about. He wants you to speak the way you speak with your accent. You know, God does not laugh at us when we shrub. You do when I do, but God doesn't. And thank God that you are not God. So after you laugh, you forget. But God answers prayer. Oh, I love God. I love God. For they think that they will be hard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them. Pray simple prayer. God, give me a hot water bottle plus a dolly. And then, forget it. Go play. And when it lands, you believe God has answered. And immediately what you do, you dig in. Because you, you don't settle. Because a lot of us settle for what we see first. And yet there is a lot for us. Go digging in. Because your other blessings are there. Bless the name of the Lord. Therefore do not be like them. For your father knows the things you have need of. Before you ask him. This little girl was praying. But God had answered already. Did, because how can the container land in Isaiah? That same day. Five months earlier, there was a lady in Europe who was commanded by God to put a water water bottle and a doll in there. Why? Because God knew there would be a little girl somewhere praying. That's why I love the providence of God. That God knows it even before it happens. So the preparation of God blessing me, you know some of you look at me today and you are marveled. Hey, now you are mebariki wa apana wacha kushanga. He baraka ninaona sahi. Aliona nilipo zaliwa, nilipo hepa kifo. Aliona. And that's why we tell the devil, shetani wewe, wewe ubeshidwa. If I'm still alive, tell your neighbor, neighbor, the devil has lost it again. You know, because if I'm alive, the promises of God will come to pass. Bless the name of King Jesus. Don't do it because like them, because what my father knows, I have need of it even before I ask of it. Bless the name of the Lord. So he tells them in this manner therefore pray, our father in heaven, our Lord be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth, as it is done in heaven. 
The first battle, the first point in the battle of our prayer is the battle to bring heaven down here on earth. Because you see, down here on earth, cases are won by technicalities. Umesha ona mtu, ananyanganyu wa shamba na niyake. Na members wa kijiji wote walijua shamba niyake. Na we can all say niyake alizaliwa pale na ananyanganywa. Anakaa fukara. Kwa nini? Technicality. Anaulizwa swali tu. Akijichezea na hilo swali kidogo tu, basi. Walimu maombi yao itajibiwa. Lakini saa hii maombi imejibiwa ni ya watoto. Seriously. Lakini hata ya walimu itajibiwa because of technicality. Are you understanding? Kwa sababu watoto hawako kotini. Yao waliomba. Bwana, did you not hear them every day they would pray? Walimu warudi na razamu. Na hizi sirikali na walimu. Walimu warudi. Their prayer was answered. Actually it was answered a long time ago. Ni wanaume bado wanangangana. Kuna shairi moja ilitolewa jana kwa KTN. Kwa kishu. Si una ilikuwa moto wakuotea mbali. I know some of you anyway. Uh, asante sana. Hata uh, news. Hata <laughs> labda wengine mnasikia news ya watoto wanarudi kesho saa hii. <laughs> Sawa tu utapata wako mtoto. Utakuwa ukiomba na ukiangalia kwa gazeti what is going to happen. So the first battle and that is the Lord telling us that we have to pray and honestly pray that the kingdom of heaven the way things are done in heaven they can be done here not with the standing that we know corruption in this country is so large that even some of you give before your asked and you call it nishukurani so you go prepared nitarudisha shukurani you are ready, ready too? Oh. I know I'm looking, I'm talking to Christians. No, I'm not doubting your Christianity. I'm just saying, you are already ready. Ready. Ready, ready, ready. <laughs> oh my goodness. And this is the imperative mode, which means the will of God is being done in heaven and we have the authority to enforce it here on earth and decree, decree it here on earth that God could there be 50. I want you to, to walk with God every day. When you wake up in the morning, tell God, save Kenya. And then you start a conversation. God, if there are 50, save Kenya. Na usiwachie maombi pale, ake kuambia hakuna, muambie that aje. Na ikifika pali one hakuna, muambie God for my sake. Na basi kama wewe hauko, sasa ujue tumeisha. Kwa hivyo naomba wewe, uwe mwenye haki. So that in your prayer, you can get to a point you get you and you say, Lord, for my sake, save this country and save us. Thy, not my kingdom. It is thy, not my will. It is thy will be done. Bless the name of the Lord. Thy will be done. And this is the great temptation in life. To live for our own kingdom, to live for our own selves, and so on. And it can also happen in church. But it is time to quit the ladder that we are climbing in the church and start serving one another. God, may your kingdom come. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, may God's kingdom come. You have not been crowned king of the age. Take the crown off. And fall on your face before God. He could, he, he's the only one who deserves all the honor and all the glory. Sometimes I even ask myself. Ni nini kweri mungu anaweza kupatia wewe uringe nayo? Nini? What? What can God give you then you, you... And you know sometimes we say so but we forget very easily. That even money can cause us to behave in a certain way. Sindio? Na elimu je... You, even, you can even walk with the, what we used to call the academic angle. Na sa hiyo academic angle ni mtu wa form 4 at academic angle. Sasa unashindwa ukienda university and then wakuta watu wa university hakuna academic. Kwanza wakati wetu tukisoma tulikuwa tukishindwa ni ni hiyo <laughs> university ni wembe hakuna. You, you, you remember in our days 
most of the scholars ni kama akuku wembe mandevu akina anyona akina chikuku akina are orengo academic kango sasa utaringa kwa nini you know i still remember a story a very very sad story in the 70s i used to go to schools and preach thank god for various reasons they don't invite me anymore maybe it's because when i go there and then tell them in the 70s and they were not even near anywhere where whatever was going to happen so so in this one school we went many times there the head the head uh, the head teacher there was a friend and so park road fellowship i would take it there before then the gorillas and uh, i would go there to preach so one time we went there and we prayed for girls for the lord to fill them with the holy spirit and a few of them were packed with the holy spirit and they felt they were better than anybody else including the teachers so they would not even mix themselves they would go in the field what wamgu what you know and then we are wondering did we teach them this we had to go back again and and teach them you are supposed to be even more humble with the power of the holy ghost but you know normally we don't even the little knowledge of god passes up and you can tell everybody they don't know let me let me shock you in the 70s i attend a place in makweni i'm visiting a friend in makweni then they take me to a wedding in the evening for evening party are you hearing and when they hear i am kimani wa pastor they thought they are um, pastor kimani so they said good pastor umekuja tulisema hii pete yetu yezobewa na pastor ambaye hajaokoka tulimwambia hatuna pete sasa tunataka uobee hizi pete i'm saying this and i want to see yourself hata vitu ambavyo <laughs> wanafunzi waliuliza huyu tukieda biguni atakuwa mke wa nani ni wa namba 1 ama ni namba 2 ama ni namba 7 pia hii kitu hakuna what i know now if i knew it then i would not have done what i did but i was a kijana dio katika jina la yesu weka pete yako hapa hallelujah dio piga magoti hapa so i waited them again rudia hivi sana na kupenda na eh dio bas kuwe na hii na kuwe na hiyo sawa piga magoti hapa weka pete hallelujah but what i know now <laughs> what i know now i wouldn't do it i wouldn't do it so i sometimes tell god god forgive me my you this because you this has a problem we even wear people who you spiritual who you is spiritual who has made you wewe nani amekupima bwana nani amekupa especially in marriage let me t- let me say a little bit about marriage anybody who has lived with his wife 10 years can advise you if you are getting married 10 yeah. to 10 to sio nyingi wewe hujaishi hata moja ai sasa kama mimi nimeishi zaidi ya thate nikikwambia kitu kweli uwezi kubali no i'm just saying but i'm not preaching about marriage <laughs> Thank God nowadays I don't do that. I I don't even do You know there was a time actually I used to do premarital marriage myself. Mimi ndio nilifanya huyu kijana. Huyu pastor. Mimi. Nikakalisha yeye na Jacky. Nikamfundisha sijui kumi lesson kumi. Kila siku. Siku hizi nimeokoka na saidiwa na watu wengine. Eh we, hiyo kazi. But anyway you understand what i'm talking about where am i you are not king put your crown down honor god with anything that god gives you because there is nothing actually that you have that should cause you to be proud about is it money you know some of us 
Some of us, and I'm saying this and not to be proud about. I am so amazed. Can I tell you why I'm amazed? Because one billion shillings has passed my hands in the last eight months. One billion. Have I changed? Si mimi ndiyo pastor wenu pia. Si jaenda maju. Hata ni nashindua. Sasa hiyo tena itandifanya nienda maju na nikupita ilipita. Hata ikuwa yangu. Are you getting the point? Aiku. Kupita tu. Tukwana uriangalia inaenda kwa mfuko ya mwenyewe. But there are some of us. Hata ikipita lazima kila mutu kijijikwenu wajue. Na wende na ango ingine. Sijui mutu wakua na pesa nyingi na indaga na mnagani. Wende na ango hiyo. And so on. Man, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing the people who want to talk to me nowadays. It's amazing. It's amazing. <laughs> I'm amazed. And then when they see me, they wonder, Niwewe? Because they think I have security ya kuzuia watu hata wasikuje kuongea na mimi. What do you have actually? Ninini huko nayo kweli? Ebugu za rafiki yako mkono evi umuliza. Ninini huko nayo kweli? Alafu, muambia hivi. Muambia hivi. Muambia hivi. Jirani yangu. May the kingdom of God come. I hope you are understanding where I'm coming from. Because God, when he was teaching us our Lord's prayer, it's because he knows how difficult it is for the kingdom of God to reign even in some of our homes. But he tells us, please pray, thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Yeah? Are you getting the point? Wakati ka urongo kanataa kuingia. Sharp ka urongo sharp. Unasema thy kingdom. Yani ulitaka kudanganya lakini unamaliza thy kingdom. Come. Thy kingdom. <laughs> Come. The battle to bring heaven down is big. I was talking to someone yesterday who has helped many politicians but he himself I told him please never become a politician. So he tells me no I would. Why? Then we started analyzing brothers who have gone to parliament since we started voting. When I drew my first vote in 1970, vote yangu ya Christians, what wa mungu? Kuna moja Simtaji, lakini nakatuambia hivi. You know Bishop, because this was not a long time, I said, Bishop, kuingia pale, unaweza igia na moto uo wako. Sijui moto unazimagwa na nini. So he tells me, no, 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 politics. Chunga sana. Politicians. Chunga sana. Kwa hivyo munapo muombea mea. Si, ni politician. Muna muombea maombi kari sana. Moto wake. <laughs> Moto wake. Usiende ukazimika kule. The second battle, because these are battles, and you can go hard on that, you can preach to yourself, put other points, A, B, C, about heavens, because I don't have time. The second battle is the battle for daily bread. Daily bread. It, you know, it is God who says, give us this day our daily bread. It is imperative mode. When we are living for the glory of God, we can fully and confidently know that he will provide all our needs to live here on earth. Bread, daily bread. And this was Jesus' first temptation. You know what? Tumbo. He tumbo. Mwambie jirani yako. He tumbo. Na he tumbo. Sitafanya watu wengi wakose mbinguni. He tumbo. Kwa sabu, Unaiba kwa sababu ya tumbo. Unadanganya kwa sababu ya tumbo. Tumbo. Ambia tumbo. Tumbo. Hebu nikupe siri moja ya kucheza na tumbo. Umuambia siku moja tumbo. Hii wiki moja hauli na haunyui. Yani you have to put him somewhere. Huyu tumbo. Kwa sababu tumbo wakikuongoza. Awe ndi anaingiaga kwa mlango mbele. Umeisha. Tumbo, akikuongoza ati, 
Every time you think it is your, the bread which goes before you, man, you are done. And Jesus is, 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 is being tempted. If you are the son of God, turn this stone into a tomb. And then Jesus is wondering, what, shall we live only by a tomb alone? That's what he's telling the devil. No! We can live with the word that energizes us. That, that, that is key. Daily bread. We too have a battle in our day. Economic conditions are tough. There is often more bills than there is money in that month. There is more out to go than there is in the income. Jobs are lost. Budgets are strained. We need to realize that God has the ultimate stimulus package. We can find it through prayer. That's why I said prayer is a battle. And what are we battling through? We are battling our daily bread. This morning as we prayed, when we woke up, uh, around five, our prayer was, my prayer, because I'm the one who was praying. And as I prayed for my family, you know, there were some birds that were singing somewhere, and I heard them. So in my prayer, I prayed, oh God, listen to those birds. They have no bands, no stone, no nothing. They don't toil. Those birds, God help me to be like them because they are saying, thank you for the new day and thank you for the food for the day. Those birds, they were just enjoying themselves. May we wake up one day, even when things are too bad. Actually, that's why the singer said, I am going to rejoice in the Lord. And I say again, I'm going to rejoice. Amen? Because sometimes situation causes us not to enjoy. But I'm going to enjoy and rejoice in the Lord God of my salvation, daily bread. We must realize that the key to our provision is through prayer. Let me give you another story. While crossing the Atlantic on an ocean liner, a preacher called Mayer was asked to address the first class passengers. You know, you know, hiyo down ni dunia hii, first class passengers. Unajua first class passengers? Ni wale jamaa wanaingiaga ndege kwanza na wanatoka ndege kwanza. Kwa hivyo kama uhuru wako kwa hiyo ndege hautamuona wewe. Kwa sababu ataingia mwisho kama mmekaa ili msimkute ameketi. Na kutoka atatoka kwanza kama amebebwa na first class. So the preacher went to preach to the first class guys and uh, he he was addressing them. And the captain is the one who had asked him to speak about answered prayer. How God answers prayer. And there was a guy who never believed in God at all who was present at the service. And he was asked by friends after the, 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 the address, what did you think about the preacher's sermon today? He answered, I did not believe a word of it. So that afternoon... He was taken to speak to another group, the other group, you know. Yo see you first, ni yo group wigine. Yo group wigine. Thank God niko kwa hiyo group lakini bado bwana yuko pamoja na nami. But many of the listeners at his morning in the first class followed him to hear him in the second. And the guy who never believed in God followed him also to listen. He claimed that he just wanted to hear what the babbler had to say. But when he was going, he carried two oranges. Two. And as he passes by, akienda kwa huo mkutano, wakakuta kuna mama moja, amelala. Na huyo mama alilala, ameweka mkono. Najua kuna, kuna style nyingi sana za kulala. <laughs> Some people say me, I don't close my eyes, kabisa. That's okay. Maybe I'm ready. I'm, you know. But anyway, the lady was asleep, really asleep. And uh, so what he did, because she was asleep and her hands were open, in the spirit of fun, this guy who never believed in God put the two oranges in her outstretched palms. Right? So he goes to the meeting to hear this babbler preach and, he's, and, he's under, and after some time he's, uh, he comes back. 
after the meeting, he saw the old lady happily enjoying the pieces of the fruit that were there. And this uh, non-believer asked him, you seem to be enjoying that orange, he remarked with a smile. Yes, sir, she replied, I am so happy about it. My father is very good to me, the woman said. And this guy said, your father? Yes, my father is very good to me. He is very much alive. My father is very much alive. I've been seasick for days. I was asking God somehow to send me an orange. I suppose I fell asleep while I was praying. When I woke up, the two oranges were here. <laughs> that guy who never believed in God, that evening he believed in God. Because God used him to answer a prayer of a lady that had prayed. May God bring those people that are carrying your answer because you have prayed. Remember, we are praying for the battle of food. If it is food, may the Lord bring it. May he release it towards you because he's God. Bless the name of the Lord. So there, uh, this guy who never believed God, he was converted to Christ. Yes, praying in God's will, bring an answer. I can see those hands. Please leave them like that. Don't clinch them. Please just leave them like that before the Lord because God is going to make sure that your supply comes. It might have taken a little while. Remember the story of that girl, the providence of God, that people five months before had had the cry that was coming uh, for that sick child. May God do the same to you. Thirdly, the other battle that we find in this, in this verse is the battle of unforgiveness. Oh, the battle of unforgiveness. And forgive us our debts. The imperative here is the heart of God is to forgive as we forgive debtors. This is a present, if you like, indicative. God forgive me. And here as I forgive. I'm going to forgive someone. But you know, for Nakuzamez in Kazi. Mwambi Oh, thank God. Hii kanisa kweri ni ya watu wa mungu. Umekosewa na umekosea mtu. Kwa hivyo ni vita. Kupiga magotu kusema, I'm waking up and I'm going to forgive someone. Oh, I like that. I'm going to forgive someone. Unatafuta mtu wa kusamehea. <laughs> and it is not easy. I'm telling you, forgiveness is not easy. In the 70s, in Zuri, in the 70s, somehow, in the, <laughs> in the 70s, somehow, I had the money, but around the 80s, it the end of the So, someone, a friend of mine came, I can be BMW is in a talk race in South Africa. I recall me on a Kamoja Kazuri Sana. Kaniambia ni mchangia ende ya nunue, ata nilipa. Na unajua uzuri wa hiyo meaka, watu wa kiokoka walikuwa meokoka. Hile kuokoka, wacha hili ya murongo, kuokoka. Ukisema kitu, ata unaweza enda na yo banki. Actual fact, gari yangu ya kwanza nilipelekwa na mzee mmoja. Kwa sawa ni meokoka, kwa banki, nikapewa pesa. Hatuja andikania na ye mahali. Haka sama, uyu ni kama mtoto wangu, wapatiwe pesa, nikapewa pesa, nikanunua matatu. Haraka number one. So anyway, ni kampatia uyu dugu pesa. Na alikuwa ndugu alikuwa na biashara nzuri sana. Alikuwa kichukua nzuo huko upande wa kitui. Na anakuja kuzia wa kikuyu, anaenda naro, ngano. Ndugu alikuwa na pesa. Ndugu alikuwa na chapa. Lakini kwa mwaka moja, akawa na nihepa. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh Mungu wa, we ni Mungu wa ajabu. Siku moja sijui ni vizuri kuomba Mungu akusaidie. Siku moja nimetoka Muranga nimenoki. Nimeomba pali nitakuta yeye. Pali nitakuta yeye. Tamzamea kabisa. Hata si nataka kuogea naye tena. Nikafika Nairobi. Na nilipofika Nairobi nikaenda kwa harusi ya rafiki yangu mmoja. Na hiyo harusi bwana Yesu apewe sifa. Haikuwa na limo. Wale walikuwa wamesimamia walikunya na Kenya bus. Oh Saints Cathedral Kenya bus. Mwambie jirani yako kukikosa magari ingia matatu. Kile cha muhimu ni uolewe. Haya. Na walioana na wameshigamu imeshika siku hizi wanaisha ma, wanaishi mahali pengine. Sasa hawaendagi na bus, wanaendaga na magari zao. Anyway nilipenda kwa hiyo kwa hiyo harusi cha pili master of ceremony akahepa haku hapo si tuko pale tunaulizana master of ceremony yako wapi alafu wakaniangalia wakasema master of ceremony tunatafuta nani si ni wewe jana nilikuwa nikikumbuka kairo jambo wakati tulikuwa kwa harusi ingine nikaona kuna mambo siku hizi mc wanatufanya Nigelifanya wazee waziku ile wengine wangekuwa wakipelekwa ICU wakitoka hapo. Kwa hiyo tunaambiwa tutingise, sijui tutingise inakuwa moto. <laughs> so anyway nikaenda pale, nikawa mkalimani. Tukatafuta mkalimani wa Kiswahili akakosekana. Kwa hivyo nikawa mkalimani, kulikuwa na wazungu pale, mkalimani yote tatu. Yote tatu. Kwa hivyo ni naomba na kizungu nusu, naomba na Kiswahili nusu, naomba na kikuyu nusu, alafu namaliza kiz... unasema ameni ya kizungu, ameni ya Kiswahili na imani ya kikuyu. Zina kuwa vizuri sana. Yaani nikiwa pale kwa maombi, nikija kusema ameni ya mwisho nikaona yule ndugu pale. Moyo wangu umepanda. Hey, nilikuwa juu. Niliposema sasa tukiwa hivyo tumeketi ni, ni tu weta moduli ogotwa leria tutaita yule uh, tu, we are going to call sasa nilipomuita nikatoka mbio kwa yule ndugu kaambia ndugu usitoroke tena hiyo pesa nishakupa yote pff. na nikamwacha hakulala hiyo usiku kwa sababu nikukataa alikuwa akikataa kunili alilete mandi yote <laughs> siri ni hii musamehe atalete mandi yeah forgive them you are carrying it too long release it and ever since i have known the secret if i if i lend you money and you cannot pay me for a while i know i better give you freedom ili ukiniona uache kuwa na shida ya kutoroka nimewapa wengine hapa siri eh? ukitoka hapa tafuta hiyo jamaa hiyo paundi yako aliyepa nayo hiyo kumi aliyepa nazo hiyo mia, ngiri kumi, ngiri tano. enda umwambie some of them will bring it on monday may it happen may it happen to you the battle of unforgiveness i don't know whether you have you heard this story of a little boy who prayed in a sunday school he said this forgive us our trash baskets as we forgive those who trust basket against us. It's just a little joke. And forgiveness is a big barrier to the operation of the king's benefit in our lives. And forgiveness. Hatred in the heart shuts down the operation of the kingdom in your life. Imagine a caravan or a container loaded with what you need, ready to be delivered to you, and all you have to do is make the call. You make the call, but the line is blocked. And the container, which is uh, driven by a lorry by someone, cannot receive your call. You would want to do everything possible to remove whatever is blocking the line, right? Atakupigia safari kwa hii line, eh fungua line, fungua line. 
And God wants to tell us the same, that unforgiveness blocks. Some of you, kanya kanya. You know kanya kanya? Sometimes you have known the answer. And you are trying to call, you know, call this number. Call, you don't know that here, Mchezo. Call this number. Una piga itukulivi. Una piga itukulivi. Piga itukulivi. Baka una fika mali una noki. One day I tried it. Hata nilisimama kangemi. Si kuambia Alice. Kwa zani nilikuwa ni mejua answer zote. Sana nikasimama nikapiga. Hawa kuchukua huyu jamana hitua. Ni wakameme. Kuna mama mmoja na kujaga between 4 and 7. PM. Huyo PM. <laughs> How would you feel? Oh man, it is blocked. <laughs> you want to unblock it. <laughs> anyway, do you know something? God saved me. Because every answer, wana kukula pesa. Every answer, wana aikuwa bure, kini bwana kanisaidia ata wakati wakuka hapa the whole day sikuwa now. Remember that you can shut down the operation of the kingdom in your life by unforgiveness. Very quickly, because I want to finish now. The fourth thing that the Lord Jesus Christ teaches us about battling in prayer is the battle of life's circumstances. And do not lead us into temptation. But deliver us from evil. It is imperative mode. The Lord tells us to ask him to do it. Deliver me. And it is a battle. As I say it again, we battle in prayer. It is a battle. Deliver me. Pressed and harass and everything, but you are saying, God, God, please lead me not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver me. Of course, you know the Lord does not lead us. But you know the Lord can allow some situation, isn't it? We're telling God, don't allow those situations. Deliver me from those situations. Don't allow them to happen because God can allow them to happen. Remember the providence I shared here not long ago. Temptation, circumstances, bringing toils, things to annoy us. A time full of prayer and pain for a Christian. In a physical sense, Diseased or blind, in an ethical sense, evil, wicked, or bad. But we are telling God, lead us not into, don't allow. But if we are in it, deliver us. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, we need to tell God. We need to tell God. What are we telling God? We are telling God, don't allow it to happen. But if we find ourselves in it, deliver us from that evil. Finally, the battle for the glory. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The battle for the glory. I started by saying who takes the glory. Oh, mekuja hapo, bishop, umejenga kathidro, mumpia hiyo, and then tutaijenga na kutakuwa kusafi but we will still be ourselves. We know who receives the glory. We know who receives the glory. Not me, not you. It is God who receives the glory. And we will do it. God receives all the glory. Kingdom, the power, and the glory. Paul wrote, Whatsoever you do in word and in deed, do all to the glory of God. The word forever means into unbroken age. That's where we are headed. Into the age that will never end. Into the age where there will be no brokenness. Forever and ever. May God's kingdom reign in us forever and ever. May the glory of the Lord, may he receive all the honor. Even when he has healed, let's always go back to him and give him honor. You know, didn't, didn't you know God answers prayer in this church? Why don't we call the cameramen to come so that they can take you and show it all over the world? Because we know who receives the glory. <laughs> it is not men. Oh, how many people the Lord blessed you financially and we prayed for you and it happens. You hands up, come and give a testimony. Then a camera is here. 
No, no, no. We give testimony in our home cells and encourage one another. But who receives the glory? God receives all the glory. We used to sing a song in, in, the, in the 80s. Some of my, worship, my best worship leaders are now pastors, but they do not have a voice. But they had a song. Ati, ukiombe ya mugonjwa e, mugonjwa akapona, utukofu usibebe, unamwenyewe. Iyo wimbo ilipotelea wapi Ruth. Na tuliimba, tulikuwa tunaimba, tunatoku wa najasho. Yani ukitoka, uwekere mtoto mkono wapone. Usibebe, wacha. Mwachie mwenyewe. Kwa sababu utukufu, unamwenyewe. Bwana asifiwe sana. So what have I said? Prayer is a battle. How do we battle it? Can I hear? Hata siziki. Nilifikiria nitasikia lakini hakuna mtu amesema kitu. Siwangalie notes if you are writing them. We are battling to break heavens where? Down here in this country with all the confusion and corruption. Heaven must come down. Then? Daily bread. Iyo tumbo yako tafadhali wacha isiende mbele sana itakusumbua. But we know we are battling for that daily bread and we'll get it in the right way. Amen? Like that lady who had two hands and the oranges were placed in her hands. And I said, kuna watu wamebeba oranges zako. Weka mikono yako na mnahi, zitawekwa pale. And the third thing we said was, battle for unforgiveness. Wengine tuko hapa na tunaumwa na tumbo. Ukiona fulani tumbo, inakuuma. Samehea. Utapona vidonda ya tumbo na utakuwa na raha. Amen. That is the battle and God is calling us to pray and battle it in unforgiveness. Then the fourthly, battle for life circumstance. Because circumstance has a way it will bring its challenges. So we are battling there too. And finally, battle for glory. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, what can we say then? If Lord God, you speak to us so clearly like you have done today, that we can go out of here knowing that prayer is battle, but we are going to battle in it. We are going to pray. We are going to ask heaven to come on earth. We are going to ask for our daily bread. We are not going to ask for year bread. We are going to ask for our daily bread. We'll be careful to know what dear Father can get stale because it is manna that we want to keep for tomorrow. But Father, we'll be careful for our daily bread. Lord God, that we are going to ask for your forgiveness. We will forgive. Lord God, and the battle of circumstance, we are going to win them because you are not going to allow, we are asking you, but deliver us from evil. And Father, receive all the glory, receive all the honor. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. May, let's give the Lord some, some praise.